Right, so are you a C++ guy? Give us a background. Yeah, so I've been doing C++ for a couple years now. I uh, work in the defense industry. Um, so use C++ 14, so I'm a little nervous. Use C++ 14 at work, but I'm a little familiar with like 17. Haven't done much at all in uh, 20. Okay. Uh, C++ 14 had some good additions. Can you name me one addition? Yeah, so... Move semantics, smart pointers, auto. Wait, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. We're talking about fourteen. Oh, okay. Sorry, that, that's eleven. Yeah. But fourteen. Okay, make unique. Okay, nice. Today's video sponsor is me. I built this platform called GetCrack.io because I noticed that candidates were really struggling in the knowledge round. That doesn't just mean language knowledge. It also means things like concurrency, data design patterns, networking, computer architecture, operating systems. This platform covers it all. We have over 600 questions from three different languages, C++, Python, and Rust. Make sure to check it out. Let's talk a bit about pointers. I wanted to check whether or not what I'm pointing to via the weak pointer is still valid. How would I do that with a weak pointer? Um, I think it's, I know that there's a method. Is it dot lock? I believe dot lock will give you either null pointer or shared pointer, but there's another okay. API that'll tell you whether or not the object's still around. Expired? Yeah, good job. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm actually is, using that at work. <laughs> okay, cool. For observer is, class, yeah. Sorry. Is a shared pointer thread safe? Uh, yeah, so the, the reference count is atomic, uses an atomic to do that, so it, it is going to be thread safe. What it's pointing to isn't inherently thread safe so you'd still have to use like a mutex a semaphore or something yeah um but yeah the share pointer the way it like reference counts is uh thread safe you talked about uh, uh atomics so you just opened up an entire can of worms what are the um forms of memory ordering rather in atomics can you name me a couple uh honestly i'm not too sure i've used atomics a couple times but um they're not the best for synchronization because um, you can only really use it for one variable. You can't use it for multiple vari variables um, at the same time because then you get into, like, race conditions. Um, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Okay. Can you tell me the difference between weight-free and lock-free programming? Um, not too sure on weight-free. I know, so lock-free is, you're, like, you're not using a mutex or anything to, to lock. Okay. Um, weight-free... That doesn't ring any bells. Does that have to do... I assume it doesn't have to do with, like... They both have to do with atomics, but it's the way that they're used relative to each other. Like, it's very hard to achieve a truly weight-free system. Gotcha. Okay. I'll have to brush up on that, because okay. that is... So, uh, lock-free says that the entire program is making progress, but within a given amount of bounded steps, it's possible that a thread, one thread or more are not making progress. While in a weight-free system, with it's not just the entire pro program making progress. Every thread is making progress within a bounded number of steps. It's a little hard to describe beyond that without seeing like a tangible example. That's a bit hard gotcha. to type right now. Why would the compiler add padding to a struct? Um, so it would add padding to a struct. Well, because like the architecture, it's going to be word aligned. Um, so if you just put like something that's only one byte, right? And then you yeah. try to put in something that's four bytes after, it's gonna pad with three bytes. So if you try to put it in a char and then an integer right after, if you do like a size of on, a, on, on that class type or struct type, it's gonna uh, have padding there to make sure that it's aligned properly. And why is that, that alignment important to begin with? I get you are right, but who cares? Uh, so why is it important? Yeah. Um, because the architecture is going to be word aligned. So if it's if it's not aligned properly, um, it, it's just not going to read. Well, it will, it will read, but it will read. I don't want to give you the answer. Like what I'm getting at is you can have a struct that's not aligned. Your program will run just fine. But why is it bad if it's not aligned? Or why? What? What? What happens if it's not aligned? Uh, I'm not sure. Take your char in your int case, because you're okay. right. You you know the right answer for it's aligned and it should be. But a lot of a lot of candidates don't know why. I want to push you on the why. Gotcha. Um, so why it should be aligned? Um, 
So something I can think of is a pointer is going to be um, a word, right? So if you're if you're not aligned and you have something on the stack and it increases the this, this stack pointer, um, it's going to try to do that in terms of words. But if you're if you're not aligned, it's not going to be pointing to the right place in memory. Am I kind of on the right track there? So if it's not pointing to the correct place in memory, what will it need to do differently? Would you have to keep track of like some sort of offset? You're getting closer. Do you want me to give you the answer? Sure, yeah. So imagine your exact case where you have a char and you have an int. So in the case where there's no alignment, there's no padding, to read the int, you'll need two memory accesses instead of one. You'll need one to read the first three bytes that just so happen to be in the same register that the char's in, and then another read for the address right after that to read the first byte off, or the third off byte offset of the int, which is the first byte in that address, which is its last byte, in order to actually get construct that int. So gotcha. you'd have two reads instead of one. So it's an efficiency thing at that point. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about like practical implications of writing C++. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want, do you know what L1 cache is? Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think I know it honestly uh, good enough. I, I, just when things I were getting interesting. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I haven't, <laughs> operating system's not my strongest. Okay. Um, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> ba ba back to the C++ questions now. <laughs> Um, um, but if you do want to add, want to ask more like interesting, like I'm pretty good uh, with, uh, I, I like template uh, metaprogramming a lot. So I've done a good amount of that using like type traits. Um, okay. Uh, let's, okay. Name. Let's say I, let's say I have a, a template. Foo is a template, takes T by copy. Okay. But I want whatever I pass to Foo to be modified inside of Foo. So I pass the number one to foo, for example. Inside of foo, it says t equals two. And then after foo is done executing, I want t, or I want that an int to now, now be two. Okay. So you want to pass in a one. So basically you want to pass in a reference. Um, you can pass in like a reference wrapper. Okay, how would I do that? Um, there's a thing in the standard library Called. that you would call this like i think it's ref yes good job that's what i was getting at i'm sorry if i worded that question not great but it seems like you i worded it good enough for you to understand what i was referring to yeah they the what you wrote in chat helped okay um, good <laughs> yeah <laughs> um let's let me think a little okay let's say i have a template and i do not want it to be i do so i have i have that exact same template foo pretend there's nothing in the body foo t and I want to prevent that template from being instantiated for doubles. How would I do that? Uh, equal delete. So you can make an explicit specialization for doubles and then just equal delete it. Okay, good. What if I tried to move a const object? Uh, it won't work. You're going to you're gonna get rid of this. Uh, so const is part of the CV qualifier, or yeah, CV qualifier, so it's const volatile. You can't just get rid of it like that. You could try to use a type trait to get rid of the const, but... What will happen, though, if I try to move a const object? You'll get a compile of error. Ooh, you sure? You, it was so yeah. promising when you said a move will always happen, and now you're telling it's... me it's going to error? Okay, let me think about this now. So you are so you have a const variable, and you're trying to call std move on it. You have a const... You out, uh, On the stack, const object of type a, a. Stood move a. Okay. Um, so it'll make it a const R value reference. Do those exist? Yes. I'm not sure. I don't think it'll. I would have thought it would, it would have compiled error because it's part of the. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do you know what the answer is? Yeah, it just makes a copy. It fails silently. Let's talk about data structures. Okay. What happens to pre-existing iterators on a vector when a vector okay. grows its capacity? So when it rises its capacity, are the iterators going to become invalid, invalidated by that? Yeah, that's right. 
So you would have to, yeah. So you would have to basically recreate the iterators, and that's why iterator references are dangerous. So okay. if I was, if I knew for sure that this vector will always be ten units in size, what can I do beforehand before I even build an iterator Reserve. For vector? Reserve, right? What if I say that you know what? I changed my mind. I only want five capacity. Shrink to fit. Okay. What if I want to create uh, the object inside the vector as opposed to a copy? In place. Okay. What if I want to um, check if the vector is empty? Um, just dot empty. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to see if you. Some Was that like, a trick question? No. Some people accidentally <laughs> say clear. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to throw you off a little. Um, yeah. I love in place. Perfect forwarding how, functions are so efficient. We'll get there in a sec. How is a okay. deck implemented under the hood? Actually, before we get there, what's the size of a vector on a regular implementation? Like, in, if you were to implement one, how big would it be? Three words. Okay. So on the 64-bit system? Um, so every pointer would be 64 bits. So it would be 64 times three. And bytes. Let's talk bytes. Uh, divided by eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, how's a deck implemented under the hood? A deck? Yeah. Or double and oh. Q? Uh, that's a good question. How is a double and Q under a hood? Is it just a list? No. I, I don't know the answer to this, but I, I'm just trying to... Why would, it be a, why would it be a list, though? That's uh, not a very uh, memory-efficient data structure. That's true. Uh... Let, let me mm. ask you this, and then we'll go back to deck. How's a queue implemented under the hood? A heap? No. No? A queue is implemented usually as a deck. <laughs> oh, so now, okay. we go, now we come back to the deck. How's a deck implemented under the hood? Under the hood. Um. So it uses another data structure. No, it, it actually has its own implementation. It does not like a, de a queue that will use a deck. Oh, okay. Um, so it's not like a linked list? No, definitely not. Uh, I'm not sure. It's just two pointers? It's an, array to, it's an array of pointers to allocated memory. Okay. Sorry, sorry, it's an array of pointers to contiguous memory. That's what I meant. So it's like chunks, as, as the deck grows in size, it reallocates more space mm -hmm. by gotcha. reserving another contiguous chunk of memory. Okay. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look into that. I, I haven't really used uh, queues as much. It's okay. Really, yeah, unordered maps, maps. Okay. We just talked about, you just talked about make unique, make shared. Why would I use make shared over just passing a newed up object to the shared pointer constructor? Um, yeah, so a couple of reasons why you would use that. The first one would probably just be so you don't have to duplicate code as much. You can use auto and then only have to write in the type once. Um, so that would be one of the reasons. Another is it's more efficient, right? Because it's it's it could just make one continuous block of memory for both the control block. We're talking about share pointers, Yes, right? yes, yes. Yeah, so it'll make it one uh, one block of memory for the uh, control block and for the underlying type uh, instead of having to like new the um, underlying type and then later create the the control block on the heap hmm. um, there's one more reason yeah so that was the first reason the other reason oh uh exception safety yeah. so with like make sure to make unique um the reason they're good is if there is an exception, you don't lose or you don't have a memory leak. It, it, yeah. it makes sure that it's actually Cleaned in the, the smart pointer. Yeah. What's uh What's your favorite C plus plus twenty feature? I uh, haven't really done much with C plus plus twenty, but I, I heard a lot of good stuff about like concepts. Not that I know much of them. I'm, okay. I'm more, way more familiar with like Sphene. Okay. What uh, What's your favorite C plus plus twenty three feature? Uh, haven't looked into 23 at all. Hmm. Yeah, we're stuck at 14. I mean, you're, the, your company's stuck at 14. You're not stuck at 14. That's true, but <laughs> I, I can't use stuff. That's a, <laughs> um, um, I can talk about 17. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, that's like fine. if constects were. That's nice. Oh, okay. Let's talk about if constects were. 
I have an if const expert method. Okay. The return type is an int. Inside the if const expert branch, I return an int. In the else, I return a std byte. What was the return type of the function? Int. Okay, and then in the if const expert, you're returning int? I'm returning in the in conf, if const expert, I'm returning int. And in the else branch, I'm returning std byte. Yeah, something's wrong there. Because in the else, well, what, I guess what's the expression in the if const expert? True. True? Oh, then nothing's wrong. Because it's never going to get to that else. Um, since you have true in that if const expert, the only the only thing, it's going to be true. So the only co uh, control path after that is just whatever inside that if const expert. I don't think that that's true. I think intuitively that sounds true, but I remember running into this problem. Let me let me type it out. And hey, you may well, be right. I think I am because I, I, I've ran into this issue with uh, the type trait is enum. If it's, and I had to use, put it inside a if, if const expert because if it wasn't, uh, it would get a compile error. Um, let me, let me type it out because I know that there are, this, if const expert is a, it's a complex. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, trait, so. And honestly, I have been, like you said, stuck on 14, so I haven't used it much, but I've used it enough to which, to where okay. I think that's right. This is where this gets fun because now I learn stuff too. Absolutely. So give me a sec. Int. Um, oh, this has been great. Function. Because like, I've been listening for for a while now. Haha! <laughs> I was right. Vindication. Wait. Whoa. Because the return type still gets checked in in these sorts of weird cases. There are certain rules, and I just remember it. I just I knew intuitively what you said sounds right. Yeah. I'm gonna send it to you too, so you don't think I'm okay. Great. If you'd like to see this entire conversation, you can either catch me live or you can become a channel member and watch it unfiltered, uncut, and see not just this, but all my previous live streams. The reason I try to keep these videos to around 12 to 20 minutes is because sometimes I think there's not a lot of value in other parts of the conversation. But like I said, if you'd like to see the rest and you don't like the fact that this video ends abruptly, you could become a channel member. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.